what miracle were they looking for? They saw dangerous dimensions of God. But at the slightest opportunity, they bowed to bow. They committed adultery with Ashtaroth. Take up his cross and do what? Follow. So, Jesus here was giving us the description of a man who has decided in his heart that he wants to live in synchrony with Jesus. Jesus was here describing the life of a man who has decided in his heart that he wants to leave the world behind and come after Jesus. That is, this man has decided in his heart that he wants to make Jesus the priority of his existence. So Jesus was now saying that it's not enough to pay lip service to your desire. The proof of desire is not words. The proof of desire is action. If you actually have desire, we will see the, the mirror of your desire in the actions that you are willing to take. Or the, let me use the word I want to use for this service, or the sacrifices you are willing to make. The proof of a man's desire is always reflected in the sacrifices he is willing to subject himself to to become the thing that he desires so desire will continually be impotent until sacrifice enters the quest equation so the mathematical equation that jesus was showing us here is that desire plus sacrifice becomes a manifestation so if you are ever going to touch the substance of reality it's not enough to desire spiritual reality if your desire will become substance you must add to that equation and the addition is sacrifice and the way the lord now broke sacrifice down he gave me three definitions one the man will have to do what deny himself if you are a student of the bible you will find out that god is he never asked you to do something that he himself has never done are you here if god is ever going to put a requirement on you he himself would have modeled it first john 3 16 the bible says that for god so loved the world that he did what give his only begotten son now when you read that I know that you read it in the sense of Kesena is a father, divine is his son. Kesena loved the world, then he gave divine for the love of the world, for the salvation of the world. But when I read that scripture, because I understand what John teaches in John chapter 1, when he says in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God, the same was with God in the beginning. That word became flesh and did what? Got amongst us. I read that scripture as for God so loved the world that he gave himself. Are you here? Because Jesus, even though he was the son of God, Bible tells us, just like I quoted in John chapter 1, that he was also God. So God did not go to take another man's child. God gave a dimension of himself for the salvation of the world. And for him to be manifest in that dimension, you will now need to read Philippians chapter 2 and begin at verse 5. Give me Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in who? Christ Jesus. Next verse. Who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming how? What did Jesus do here? He denied himself. He was equal with God and it would, it would not have been considered a, a, a breaking of the law for him to have demanded his right. 
inequality. But he denied his deity so that he could take on the, 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 the form of a slave. So when Jesus says, let him deny himself, he's not asking you to do something that he has not first of all done. Are you here? So the first definition of sacrifice is that a man must know how to what? Deny himself. This is important because the doctrine and the teaching that the average believer is accustomed to or has become acquainted with in modern day is the teaching of self-indulgence. Self-worship. Men are being raised in denominations in the four walls of places that are supposed to mirror the government of God. Men are being raised to be lovers and pleasers of themselves. So the average believer, without even knowing it, has prioritized himself above God. His needs are more important than what God needs. His appetites are stronger within his vessel than the appetites of the immortal spirit that dwells within him. So him or her will readily yield to the yearnings of his carnal nature than yield to the yearnings of the spirit. And you see, the man has not become like that by accident. He is like that because that's the way he has been taught. That's the way he has been raised. And the reason that kind of spiritual development is what permeates the Christian space at this time is that Satan knows. He knows that a man can never be greater than his doctrine. If you want to destroy a man, corrupt his doctrine. Once he is fed with the wrong kind of meal, without you even praying, without Satan sending demons, the man will become a caricature in the spirit. He will look like an amoeba in the spirit. So every meeting is about how to marry. Every meeting is the wonders of the soft touch with a comedian there. You are looking for soft touch. Every meeting is characterized by what we feed the carnal nature. Because somehow Satan crept into the body of Christ and gave us the impression that if a man denies himself, he is suffering. And suffering should not be found in the vocabulary of a Christian. And we have bought the lie. Bought the lie. And hence, so we have people who have come after Jesus, but we have very few men who have denied themselves. 